Welcome to the medical device mini-series. During this video, we will be covering trends within medical devices, why patients and doctors are adopting these new technologies, and some design considerations for three different end equipments. The nature of healthcare is changing. Populations are increasing exponentially, with healthcare systems expanding linearly. In the United States, it's expected that the population over 65 will nearly double in 20 years. There's no other way of handling this expansion but by increasing efficiency. We're seeing healthcare systems handle this by creating new healthcare applications on smartphones or integrating more technology into their everyday processes. These are a two-pronged approach. Companies like IBM are using machine learning algorithms to automate processes like x-ray analysis to improve doctor efficiency. Meanwhile, these healthcare applications are moving the reliance from being completely on the medical professional to the customer, to the patient. With these new applications, patients can better track their health, better um, analyze when they need to see a doctor, and maybe even avoid unnecessary visits. To enable this, even governments are creating legislation that permits things like telehealth. Innovation is always desirable, but you may be asking, what do rechargeable batteries have to do with medical devices? Well, as these medical devices increase in functionality with either touch screens or constant connectivity, power requirements increase. Currently, primary cell batteries cannot handle constant connectivity or touch screens, therefore, in order to have these types of devices, you need to shift over to rechargeable batteries. Then we get into areas of specialization. Rechargeable batteries, you can get very, very specific on temperature range, on discharge rate, or even on safe operation regions. So all this allows for specific niche medical devices to be designed. Adding on to that, rechargeable batteries are across the board increasing in implementation from toys and to all the way up to cars because since they were introduced in 1999 lithium-ion batteries have increased in capacity over two times and been about one-tenth the cost of the original batteries. We really see a lot of positive trends towards pushing rechargeable batteries within medical devices. This including the safety side of minimum operating performance or essential performance is now stating that medical devices need to work without AC power in order to be certified within the field. Although these technical factors are attractive to engineers designing the next generation of medical products, patients only really care about usability and quality of care that these products have. Technology like Bluetooth Low Energy allows for connected medical devices to report and store information that is invaluable to patients and physicians. By using this information, it is possible to provide alerts to remind patients about exercise goals, medications, or even alert the proper authorities in a case of a medical emergency. In addition to these reminders, rechargeable batteries can be smaller in size than their primary cell counterparts, the reason being that to avoid constant replacements, primary cells are typically much larger than a single day's worth of energy. In the reverse case, rechargeable batteries can reduce in overall weight and size by just having one day's worth of charge and then recharging it at the end of the day. This allows for devices to be designed with smaller batteries and allowing their patients to be able to perform their everyday tasks with less interference from their medical devices. This all builds to a more discreet, less cumbersome, and easier experience for a patient. Similar to patients, medical professionals aren't very interested in the technical specifics of medical devices, but more how these changes are aiding in their day-to-day -day work. Medical professionals are pushing for more technology within medical devices because they increase the access to the patient and to the state of their health. These devices allow a doctor to continually monitor hundreds of patients without needing to schedule a single appointment. They can use this information to change their treatment or eliminate unnecessary visits if everything is reporting uh, normal values. This allows online communication and access to geographically isolated patients that would traditionally not be available. 
All of this improves the efficiency and how well a doctor can treat a problem because they have a more reliable data set and studies are showing the effectiveness of this. In the United States, the Veterans Affairs was able to reduce hospital stay lengths by 52% and reduce admissions by 32% because of increasing telehealth visits and continual tracking through devices. This is because patients were able to intervene sooner when uh, malignant factors were being demonstrated and doctors were able to see their patients more often without having them come to a hospital if they had any concerns, all of it making it a more efficient and cost-effective process. Having covered market trends and consumer behaviors, we're going to move on over to the actual design considerations for different end equipments. As you all know, medical devices come in very many different sizes, from something that fits within a heart valve to something that takes up the entire room. Therefore, design considerations are quite different in the, depending on the size of the product. First, we'll be talking about the electrocardiogram patch. This is a wearable device that is very size constrained. You need chargers that are very small, very safe, and also very efficient. A big constraint that you have is the battery size. You can't make it too big because it's too bulky on a patient's chest. So you need to have a very low drain, a low IQ on your charger, and you need to be quite accurate at charging the device so that you can get the most out of the battery that you do choose. Add on to that the different equipments that you need to connect to it, be that Bluetooth connectivity or some other uh, different aspects of it. And so you might need to have a very flexible charger where you can use the same design for two different devices where one you need to have an extra buck or a boost in order to power another uh, device or another output. Moving on to another end equipment, we have the blood glucose meter. These are larger devices, but still handheld. They're meant to be carried around by the patient throughout the whole day, and they're either a poke and stick version or the continuous glucose meter. The continuous glucose meter is typically rechargeable because it has constant connectivity and it has touchscreen displays and backlit LEDs, all of which require more power, which is typically going to be a rechargeable device. These devices need to have a USB connector as an input power source. They need to have instant on because you might have a situation where a patient might need it in that instant and it would be a problem. It could be a medical risk if it couldn't use it at the time. It needs to be a robust design. These, these devices are going to be within pockets. They might be having a high temperature gradient and things along those lines. But also, you need it to be flexible. You need it to have a scalable design. Some blood glucose meters might have additional features, others don't, and it'd be good to keep the same charger because the same core is, a, is there, and if you just want to add in an extra buck, it would be a lot easier to use an already known design. And since this is still a smaller application, you do need to have accuracy and low drainage in order to keep that device on throughout the whole day. Having covered two small and equipments, we move on to the largest of the three, the ultrasound systems. Ultrasounds can come in applications as small as a tablet, all the way up to as big as a cart or a stationary device. So that means the battery considerations can be quite wide depending on the size of the equipment. But something that is consistent throughout these devices is when you're choosing a charger, you want to take into account how you're going to avoid electromagnetic interference. This affects the quality of the device and affects the readings you might get from it. The cell counts you're going to be charging, how you're going to be monitoring these cells, and how you're going to be synchronizing it with different parts of the system. Because ultrasounds require a variety of different inputs and outputs, and the probes can be quite delicate. So you want to keep in mind how you want to synchronize with other parts within the system. Also, some, since these ultrasounds can go from large to small, you want to be flexible. You want your charger to be flexible. You want it to be 
able to be used in the handheld ultrasound to the more uh, cart driven ultrasound. So being able to scale up or scale down your design is something that's quite attractive. As some of you may have noticed, these end equipments have shared design considerations. Within worn devices and portable devices, the biggest concern is making the device long, last all day. So that means you need to have accurate battery regulation and charge termination with low self-discharge. All of this helps maximize the, the space you use for the battery and maximize how long a patient can use your device. Since these are medical devices, robust designs that ensure safe usage are needed. That means you can't charge under dangerous conditions and also protecting against non-standard adapters, either through uh, VNDPM or INDPM, which we'll be covering in another video. And finally, flexibility. A lot of medical devices do similar things. So something that's measuring your blood pressure and something that's measuring your temperature could use the same charger, even though it might be two different medical devices. It's essential that you can reuse resources because that makes the design process a lot quicker for the next medical device you might be considering.